Mr. Ellis, thank you for being here. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a pleasure to be with you on the show. About uh, the Republican nomination for uh, the presidency of the United States uh, for Donald Trump, uh, what do you think about this? Uh, certainly from uh, President Trump's orientation and, and that of his vice presidential nominee, uh, J.D. Vance, I think you see um, somewhat more isolationist currents, uh, somewhat more focused on uh, issues of, of migration and, and drugs consistent with the America First theme. Um, you uh, clearly uh, do continue to see a, a, a clear business orientation and the emphasis on the private sector. Um, and again, I think you you also uh, you see a, a party that's uh, ready to, to move forward. And um, you know, of course, uh, it was... Uh, supported uh, by the momentum from uh, President Trump's survival in, in reaction to uh, the attempted assassination against him in Pennsylvania. Um, and in many ways, uh, you know, the timing and the uh, uh, the ability to rally around this during the nomination uh, contrasts dramatically with the present calls for uh, President Biden's uh, 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 d uh, d uh, decision to step down. Uh, perhaps for Kamala Harris or, or perhaps others, although that has yet to be resolved. How possible do you think he becomes the U.S. president again? Well, there's clearly a lot of things that could happen between now and November, although uh, all the polls would seem to indicate that uh, he is uh, substantially ahead, including in some uh, critical states. And certainly uh, that lead uh, was bolstered uh, both uh, by the sympathy uh, from the uh, assassination attempt against him and the way in which he was perceived to handle it. And certainly also um, uh, President Biden's position has arguably been weakened by uh, several in the Democratic Party uh, calling for, for him to step down. So I think that combination of things has begun to uh, tip the scales more, more forcefully um, in a race that was already leaning in President Trump's favor. But again, um, we still have uh, several months to go between now and November. If he becomes the president of the United States again, what will it mean for Latin America? Clearly, there will be a change in tone. Um, I think uh, some basic aspects of, of the U.S. commitment to the region will continue. Um, and uh, certainly, uh, in my own uh, case, having served uh, during the first uh, Trump administration under Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, um, what I saw was that uh, you know there are certain areas in which uh, President Trump puts a, a very strong emphasis and, and has a very strong uh, impact on policy. I think we can see a, a return to the style of the first administration with respect to um, areas uh, such as uh, immigration and, and drugs, uh, and perhaps a, a certain a style in respecting the, the sovereignty of, of certain actors, uh, perhaps a, a move away from the emphasis of the Biden administration on certain uh, social and environmental uh, policy matters. How do you think that is going to happen? There are a range of, of different members of the team who I think will, will shape the, the more day-to-day -day workings and, and also uh, the framework that's established through whatever uh, new national security strategy document that the president brings in. And so I think you'll have a series of, of steps that shape the, the general tone um, and then uh, you know, individual things will play out from, from day to day. But um, I, and I think some of the relationships between President Trump and the individual leaders in, in the region, um, you know, persons uh, with whom we already see a strong uh, coincidence of, of views uh, such as uh, Javier Malay um, of, of Argentina will be important. Uh, I think in other areas, uh, there may be uh, some surprisingly uh, good coincidence of, of relationships. I'm thinking of uh, Jose Raul Molino, uh, the newly elected president of, of Panama, whose uh, concerns over uh, migration through Panama remarkably look like some of President Trump's uh, concerns over, over migration across the U.S. border. What is the reason all of that is going to happen? Clearly, um, in the United States, as other countries, when you um, elect a, a new leader in a democratic society, that leader sets the tone. Um, it sets the tone not only through the policies and, and rhetoric, but also sets the tone through the, the persons that they um, put into key positions. Again, it's uh, you know a democracy makes often delicate decisions. I, I saw it when I was at the State Department that um, you know although there are broad areas of emphasis, so you know what is our tone towards something like USMCA or, or T. Mech, as, as the Mexicans call it, um, what is our tone uh, towards um, uh, you know, migration policies? What, what is our tone towards uh, partners who uh, seek uh, uh, relations, uh, commercial or security relationships with the PRC? Uh, to what degree uh, do we push back against uh, Russian or, or Iranian initiative in, in the region? But also, many times there are issues that are, are very complicated. What do you think about all of this? What is your personal opinion? There are a lot of, of different dynamics in this region at risk. And why this really matters is we have seen is that 
this is the region to which the United States is uh, most affected uh, through its ties of geography, uh, its ties of, of commercial linkages, and, and its ties of, of family. Um, as we've seen with uh, immigration flows, uh, whether it's what's happening in Venezuela or Ecuador or, or Cuba or, or Haiti, um, when things are bad in the region, um, it impacts directly the United States. When you have issues of, of governance, you have um, you have issues of uh, of crime and insecurity with respect to narcotics flows that are that are killing you know literally over. 100,000 Americans last year. And so, again, um, the importance of having a region with uh, uh, a, you know, strong roots in democracy uh, that has uh, you know, relatively good levels of governance and the opportunity that the United States has to work with it in solving these issues, this is fundamental for our security and our prosperity as, as much as is the region itself. According to your knowledge, your experience, and all of this you are telling us, what do you think is going to happen? I think the region uh, will continue to play out politically in a variety of different ways. Um, so it, it's difficult to say one clear trend. Indeed, um, what you see is, is the region has responded in many ways, in different ways to stresses at, at different times. I think in many different ways, um, the region is in a state of, of flux. Um, and um, within that, uh, this context that we've historically never had uh, quite like we have it today, in which on the one hand, um, you know, you have willingness to work with China, China impact powering some of these non-democratic uh, experiments, uh, China undercutting even in democracies, the willingness to work with the United States. Uh, in some countries, uh, um, especially the authoritarian ones, uh, interest by Russia and Iran to work with them in ways that uh, directly threaten the United States like we haven't seen it before. All right. Thank you very much for those answers. Thank you. Un gusto, Senor Rodriguez. Okay.